Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Toronto. Joining us again is Amjad Ali. We're discussing the situation in Iraq, and he's a representative of the Iraqi Freedom Congress. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the plan or objectives of the Iraqi Freedom Congress, and I'm going to read just a little bit from your statement. So the aims of the Iraqi Freedom Congress are, number one, end the occupation of Iraq. The U.S. forces must leave Iraq immediately. End the interference of the Islamic currents from people's lives. Guarantee the right of the Iraqi people to make an informed and free decision on the future of their political system. And restore civil life in Iraq. And they go on to say the immediate goal of the Iraqi Freedom Congress is to seize power and establish a provisional, secular, and non-ethnic government, which includes, again, getting the U.S. forces out right away, dissolving all the political, economic, military, and paramilitary institutions set up by the U.S. in order to control Iraq militarily, politically, and economically. That's a pretty big agenda. I mean, you're talking about dismantling the current government, essentially, and seizing power. So how, how do you achieve all of this? When we uh, presented our manifesto in uh, 2005, that was um, when we presented back then, they said, well, this is a very hard agenda. You cannot do this to the Islamic currency. You cannot do to the um, U.S. established, US established uh, institutions. Um, right now, after five, elect uh, five years of, uh, or seven years of that occupation, um, people tend to realize that uh, what we're saying is, uh, is absolutely what they want. Um, they want the uh, Islamic currents or the religious, uh, religious currents to be off their life. They don't want it to be, uh, uh, they don't want them to be imposing their agendas on the people. But there's clearly a lot of people voted for religious parties in the last election. I mean, millions of people and they're, they're able to mount demonstrations and marches with millions of people in the streets. So you can't, so you can't say there aren't people that don't support them. The result or, or the participants of this, this current, uh, the recent election was not up to uh, the same as in 2005, what happened. Um, they said 50%, it is less than 50%. Uh, we know for sure that it's, not le it's, not, it's less than 50%. But still, there's a significant section of Iraqi society that supports the religious parties. Um, it is significant, but it's, uh, most of the people who gave, uh, who voted for Alavi for himself is just because he said, well, I'm not a religious, I'm a, a secular. That's right, and, and he actually was, won the most exactly, votes. Exactly, and that, that, that's why they got all these votes. So we are, again, we are relying on that 50% who did not participate in that uh, election. And we heavily rely on them, and part of them, like a huge segment of them, these are the workers who can um, do most of the work. And uh, what we talk, when we talk about the American interventions in Iraq, Iraq today, they do have a huge resentment towards the American presence there in any type of presence. Uh, military. Well, do you want the, Iraq, the U.S. troops like out tomorrow, or do you well, want them to actually, stick to the timetable they have? No, actually, we want it today, not, to, not even tomorrow. We know, that, we know this is for a fact that the resentment is there. The resentment is not only towards uh, um, the uh, U.S. presence, but actually towards the Iranian presence there and the Iranian interference, uh, towards the Syrian interference, towards the Saudi interference. Right now, all these countries who are surrounding Iraq, they are participating one way or another into Iraqis' business. They are interfering there. They want to establish something there to that serve their interests. And we want all these um, countries to be out of Iraq with their agendas. You say you want to disarm the armed paramilitary groups. This is what we believe in, and we they but the paramilitary, uh, uh, as we mentioned, it's we call them militia there in Iraq. We want to disarm them. We want to uh, stop them from interfering into uh, the ordinary life of uh, of peoples. And this is what it's been happening for like few years now. They establish their own district. They in their own district they impose their own law, and it happens with the al-Sadr militia, with the Islamic Supreme Councils, with the uh, Islamic militias that belong to Tariq al-Hashimi. These people, they have their own district, they impose their own law. They, they don't care about the government law, which is, uh, it's pathetic anyways, but they impose their own law into those districts. We want those paramilitary to be dismantled and uh, people themselves to come up and say, no, we don't want you, we are going to rule ourselves. You say you want to confiscate and repossess all the properties and estates belonging to religious foundations and utilize them to meet social, recreational, and political needs of the people. So what are you talking about in terms of these religious foundations? For example, there is a, a foundation today. It's called the uh, Shaheed al-Mihrab Foundation. Shaheed al-Mihrab Foundation, this is, belongs to Islamic Supreme Council, which is uh, uh, 
Al-Hakim, Al-Hakim, uh, Ammar Al-Hakim, he's the president of that. And this foundation owns millions, uh, but billions of dollars uh, worth of assets and uh, um, valuables there in Iraq. And uh, in fact, they are not spending it on, uh, on the uh, housing or employment or the uh, uh, civil services. They are just... Uh, um, given this money or these are salaries for um, their own militias uh, the, who, who serve their uh, interests. And this is one foundation. There are so many foundations, religious foundations. Um, they teach people how to uh, march in, the, in certain religious uh, uh, celebrations. Uh, millions and millions of dollars were spent on these, but people actually need housing, need money to work, need employment, all these things that this is what we're trying to do. Okay, let me read just a couple of other things. Facilitate the provision of empowering people to defend their freedom and expel and suppress any aggression and assault directed against their rights and freedom. Complete separation of religion from state and education. Revoke all religiously derived laws and legislations. Declare freedom of religion and atheism. Full and unconditional freedom of expression, belief, press, assembly, organization, and the right to demonstrate. And uh, we'll put the rest of the, uh, of the program up on the website below the players so people can see. It includes freedom for all political prisoners, abolition of the death penalty. You're also in favor of a referendum for the whole of Kurdistan to decide if they want to stay in Iraq or not. So it's a very broad based, some people would call, secular democratic agenda. Do you achieve this through elections? I mean, how, how do you see this coming to be? You, you now represent unions, you say about 50, 60,000 people. If they're active, that's actually quite a few sure. people if they're active. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, you didn't participate in these elections, so how do you get there from here? In our statement, the last statement prior to the election, we said um, what we want right now is a provisional government, um, dismantle or dissolve this current government. Okay, but you, you're not getting it because you said it. We are working towards that. Um, we are not sitting and waiting for the election to bring us up there to the government. We are working. We are working among people, among ordinary people. We are working among the workers, the women. Do you students. imagine that at some point you will have candidates well, in the elections? Well, nothing, nothing impossible. Uh, this is politics and uh, one one day, um, for example, uh, Al Maliki, he was uh, working as, as a side work, uh, side, uh, sidewalk vendor in Syria, and now he's a prime minister. So there is a huge difference now that like shifted the power shifting, and this is what we could see in Iraq. Uh, it depends on how much work we could do, how much we could achieve, how much support we could get. Right now, we do have a lot of support, moral support. We don't have financial support, unfortunately, um, because our agenda is totally different from what is ha what, what, what they have in the government. We don't have that financial support, but we do have moral support. We are working towards people. We are establishing our own agenda in different neighborhood right now. At some point in 2005. Uh, when uh, in the uh, sectarian war in Iraq, uh, what, ha what happened is we had our safety forces. Uh, we uh, were able to control our neighborhood. We did not let um, uh, sectarian uh, uh, forces to come invade our neighborhood and impose their agenda. We were able to protect uh, Sunnis from uh, Shiite uh, uh, arm, uh, armed groups. We were able to protect Shiites. Uh, from Sunni armed groups and whatnot. This is what we did, and we gained a lot of support back then, and we're still working among people. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, an organization don't, that wants to seize power. This is not uh, just a, a few demands that we are putting towards people, and you either you ratify it or not. This is if we want to be in part of this government or to be in government. Uh, one day, these are the things that we want to achieve for all people. Uh, when we talk about religious, um, uh, the secular, um, ending the interference of religious, if you take, of the, uh, t take a look at the uh, Iraqi uh, constitution, you will find out that uh, it is a mainly a religious uh, uh, Constitution, uh, the rights of Christians, the rights of uh, the rights of Sabi, Yazidis, uh, the rights of uh, Baha'is, the rights of um, atheists. It's not there. Uh, they are not considered. They are considered like individuals, but they are not considered as, as human being. And we want those people to have their rights in Iraq as human beings in, being, in, beings in Iraq, just like in, in, in Europe and in, in, uh, in North America. Uh, even the uh, gay rights and uh, uh, 
that is not right uh, is not there the people who, who are gay uh, today in iraq they get not only prosecuted actually they are getting assassinated in, in massive numbers nobody knows about them the government does not want to publish anything about them because the government itself is a sectarian religious government um, they don't want to publicize anything about it so what we want to do okay this is iraq these are human beings who live in this particular uh, geographic area they need their rights they they have the right to live as human beings Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.